I have finally received my Otal Evo Nano Plus. Wow, that was a long, long wait. I immediately started shooting some footage, and I was so impressed with the quality that I kept shooting for three days. I just could not stop. In this video, I will show you plenty of footage taken in all sorts of conditions to analyze the excellent video quality of this drone, as well as the video specs and the flight behavior. So, let's get going. Let's go very quickly through the settings needed for shooting video. I will do another specific one about the interface of the Auto Nano Plus, but for this one I prefer to concentrate on showing you plenty of footage in all different conditions, as it is really worth it, you will see. When we select video in the vertical menu, the shutter turns red and we are in the video auto mode. Through this icon above the shutter we access the setting for resolution and frame rate. At 4K we have a choice of 24, 25 and 30 frames per second, the same as at 2.7K, while at 1080p 60 frames per second is available. In the safety tab we can access the advanced setting and then the tab obstacle avoidance sensor to activate the sensors at the front, back and bottom of the aircraft. In the control tab we can choose the units between metric or imperial. By default the vertical tilt of the gimbal is limited to 90 degrees, but I suggest enabling the gimbal extended pitch for an extra 15 degrees upward move. The tilt of the gimbal can be adjusted by using the scroll wheel of the remote control or by tapping and sliding a finger up or down on the screen. In the camera tab there is a defog option with three strength levels to improve quality in AC conditions. It can be a very useful option. There is no option for showing a histogram. This is very annoying and surprising as the histogram is very widely used to measure the correct exposure and it is available practically in any drone, camera or smartphone on the market. Odell must have forgotten to add it in this initial stage, but I'm sure it will be available very soon. The only tool to help expose is the overexposure warning, showing zebra stripes on the overexposed parts of the image. But I do not use it, as I find it quite distracting. In video auto mode we can tap anywhere on the screen. A square with a slider will appear and we can slide the finger up or down to increase or decrease exposure. If we move to Pro in the vertical menu, we can choose the manual mode to individually set the ISO, shutter speed and white balance. While in auto video mode, we have access to two levels of zoom, two times and four times. From the tab on the top left we can choose one of the three speed modes, smooth, normal and ludicrous, the last one being the equivalent of sport mode. I find smooth to be very slow and useful only for precise move close to a subject, but for filming in most cases I use normal or look reduce, but be aware that in the latter the obstacle sensors are disabled. Let's concentrate on the image quality, as the footage taken with this drone is simply astonishing. In easy light conditions, the structure of the sky is excellent and the color rendition is a thing of beauty. The Nano Plus has only one color mode and it is a simple 8-bit mode. In general, I much prefer to use 10-bit modes with a much wider choice of colors, like in the Air 2S or the Mavic 3. But the results obtained with this little bird are so good that I don't miss HLG or the log modes. With a bitrate of 100 Mbps, the files respond quite well to post-processing, but even just out of the memory disk, the footage is already excellent, and I haven't felt the need to use LUTs, 
Just a very simple color grading is enough. In top-down views we appreciate the outstanding amount of detail, certainly due in part to the quality of the video processor. Drones generally struggle to render foliage and bear trees branches, but Nanoplus is there at the top of the class. I will certainly do a head-to-head -head of this drone against the Mini 2, but I'm so impressed with the video quality that I'm thinking about doing also comparisons with the Earth 2S and the Mavic 3. In overcast condition with most drones, the footage tend to look a bit mushy, but on this very cloudy day, the architectural details in this town at the foothills of Mount Etna are perfectly sharp. Once again with excellent colors. When flying with a drone over a town, we often get some moiré in the geometrical shapes of the buildings, with some lines moving independently. But in this case, we can hardly see any. I'm really, really impressed. In the info below, you will find info and prices about the Otol Evo Nano, as well as all the gear I use. When purchasing through this link, I get a small, tiny commission that really helps the channel going. Let's move to situations of higher dynamic range by getting closer to the direction of the sun. Here the light of the sun comes from the left at about 9 o'clock. The rendition of the structure of the sky and the elements on the ground is again excellent. With the sun on the left edge of the frame before sunset, the sky retains an excellent structure and there are no nasty flares or loss of detail and saturation, as often happens to drones under these situations. And as you can see, there is still a decent amount of info in the shadows. The same goes for images with a full sign in the frame. The lens of the Nano does an astonishing job preventing flare. And the image is still really good, considering the 0.8 of an inch sensor, much bigger than one of the Mini 2, but smaller than one of the R2S. These are extremely difficult conditions, even for a full frame camera. The Evo Nano Plus is equipped with a RYYB color filter array design, which according to Hotel should provide less noise and better results in low light. The quality of the footage shot at night with the Nano Plus opens new territory for drone videography, and the result is even better than what can be obtained with most full frame cameras. It is hard to believe that this scene were shot in pitch dark conditions, as the amount of luminosity collected and the detail in the shadows without any hint of noise gives the impression of daylight footage. I am astonished by the quality of the night footage I am seeing. I will certainly do a head to head comparison of the low light performance of the Nano Plus against DJI flagship model, the mighty Mavic 3. But my first impression is that for users interested in shooting video at night, this tiny drone is the way to go. 
Yes, it is quite expensive and probably cannot handle medium to strong winds. But with such an astonishing video quality, especially at night, I can see a lot of pros and semi-pro users adopting it for urban shooting in light winds. The Nano Plus is certainly going to stay in my bag together with the Mavic 3. Let me know in the comment below what you think of the quality of the footage with this drone, or even better, if you have already tried it. Click on this link to watch my video about the video quality of the Mini 2 to compare it to the one of the Nano Plus. And don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video interesting. Thank you.